Hello, my friend. Welcome to today's podcast episode. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my 2024 fitness and nutrition intention slash plans for the year. Now, I say this for the whole year, but I really go off of quarterly. So this is mainly focused on approaching the first quarter of the year, and then I will take a reflection point of what works, what hasn't been. And if you guys have been listening to the podcast, you know throughout the year of 2024 or 2023, I course corrected a couple times. You know, I went into a Pilates era. I didn't necessarily stick with my 2023 fitness plan, nutrition plan for the entire year. I didn't hit my health and fitness goals, but... I also have done some really great self-reflection that I think will be a catalyst for change in this year. Welcome to the Living in Sync podcast, where we will talk about the biological blueprint of your cycle and how your hormones impact every area of your life. I'm your host, Joelle, certified nutritionist, mom of two, fitness coach for over a decade, and I want to help you better understand your cycle to work with your body in achieving your goals. I will teach you how to care for your body in a well-rounded and realistic way that caters to your season of life and feel freaking amazing. In every episode, you will get tips, takeaways, and just feel like this is a heart-to-heart chat with a friend. Let's roll into today's episode. I did this episode last year, and I was actually kind of shocked at how people loved it, (laughs) how it was one of the most downloaded episodes of the year. It made it to the top 10 episodes for 2023, and I think it was just a really cool episode. It's cool to reflect back on and re-listen to. As I mentioned before, I give myself permission to change my mind always. So while I say this is my plan and approach for the year, I'm really thinking about it in the sense of quarterly. So this is my plan and approach for quarterly. You guys know I'm into researching and trying things out and using my body as my own guide. And I encourage you to do that too. I encourage you to think about your 2024 health and wellness goals from a place of feeling, not just a place of external. And there's going to be a really great podcast episode to come on that where the external comes when the internal is addressed. So for some, it may be trauma healing. For some, it may be taking a look at hormones, some it may be naturopathic medicine, some it may be going to your conventional doctor. I think you need to determine what is the best route for you, but really thinking about the feeling that you want to embody and then why you want to feel that way, getting to the root, the the reason why it resonates So then that is where you determine the action because if you are wanting to feel a certain way but you're taking this approach and then you start feeling like, oh, I'm really drained and depleted. Oh, this is really hurting my lower back. I This isn't working for me and my schedule. You're just going to hit this wall every single time. And if you really look at where your life is, what season of life you're in, how you want to feel, and then approach your goals. So I just want you to know I did that front-facing work first before I came up with this plan. And it's based off of something I haven't tried before, something that I know I want to be consistent with and the reasons why. And when I've looked at in the past, when I was feeling really good, what was I doing? So I want to start off by saying this is the year I am going to be bringing in external help. So I already have a couple doctor's appointment schedules for different things. I mean, there's the obvious like womanly exam. I'm going to go to a dermatologist to get some moles checked out. I'm really going to advocate for getting my 
um, breast health and my exam for that because I did have implants and I explanted those in 2018. And there have been studies that have shown an increase in breast cancer to those of those who have had implants. And I've seen peers battling breast cancer. And I just don't want to be somebody that doesn't get a proper screening. I have those types. I will be likely going to a naturopath, functional medicine doctor type of situation and really making sure I'm prioritizing that. Another thing I need to really prioritize is my jaw. And you might be like, jaw, what? I thought that everybody always had this pain in their jaw and in their eyes. And I realize now I clench my jaw all the time. I was diagnosed by my dentist with TMJ. Like he got his hands all up in there, was feeling my muscles. He touched the various spots. He's like, it should not be tense like this. Like you're not tensing and feel how tense that is. He offered like a very expensive headgear or a mouth guard. And that hasn't felt relevant. So if any of you struggle with TMJ and something has helped, I have thought about Botox, but when I went in to get a facial, I got a sculpting facial one time and it was very specific. I knew it was a sculpting facial and they work the muscles of your jawline. And I'm like, well, if I do my gua sha because that really helps. Like I know people like gua sha for inflammation. I do it as kind of like a massage for those muscles. And then if I pair that with my sculpting facial, I think I could do a good job of maintaining it myself. But I have a friend who works at a medical derm clinic, clinic like that. And she said like they have had a lot of success in patients who have had TMJ feel relief because those muscles are just so tight and tense. Anyways, let's not go on a rant of that too long. If you have any experience with that, send me a DM. Let's talk about it. But that type of healthcare is going to be important for me this year where I'm not just figuring things out on my own anymore, but really looking at specifically going to experts. I think I had I had some distrust in experts because in 2021, 2020, 2021, I went to a doctor and she was just like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And so that just sent me on my way to thinking everything's fine. And I do feel good. Like that's the thing though. So many people are like, the labs are coming back and I don't feel good. I feel good. I feel really good. I feel like I've got good energy. It's just some biological stuff that I just think my body's going through. But going into more of the tangible plan of fitness and nutrition, I know for me this year was a big year for me in really understanding the longevity that I want to have in my health and fitness, but also having some some challenge in my fitness because... I want to put myself in situations where I'm trying something new and I don't want my body to be the barrier. For example, wake surfing. I talked about it a couple times now on the podcast, but I went wake surfing and I tried it and I got up and I know that I'm strong and I have good balance. But the second time I got up on the board, I was going and I had to stop because my legs were giving out. My legs were shaking and I was like, I need to get stronger And I want to lose weight so it's easier for me to get up on the board so I can um, wake surf for longer and maybe I want to try this and maybe I want to try that. And my five-year-old was really all about playing tag. And honestly, you guys, I can't run worth crap. Like my body, I just, I'm, I'm not in that type of shape to run and chase my kids and I want to. And guess how you get into that type of shape? doing cardio. So my plan really is going to be continuously lifting three days a week. And I love the Madeline Moves app. I meant to, I meant to talk about this in my best of 2023, where I did my girl chat on my favorite things of this year. But the workouts that I've been loving this year have been Madeline Moves. I've gone back to it time and time again, because I like that I can just put in my headphones and I know form and I know 
really the structure of lifting, but I can get in my own zone, but there's also a structure for me to follow. So three days a week of lifting, she does a great job at including her weekly moves. Her weekly moves program is affordable and it's also designed to be a progressive overload program. So you aren't just picking up weights and dilly dallying. You really do have a structured plan that if you follow it, you're doing progressive overload and then cardio. So I'm going to be a mix of lifting and cardio. I want my cardiovascular health to be in a good place. And I'm going to be doing this with like zone two, zone three cardio, maybe getting into running again. I was on TikTok and I'm already looking at running form because I want to feel light and fit and like I can chase my kids and like I can move and I'm mobile and jogging and I'm starting with so that's where this rolls into having the goal of running where can I start I have a bike and so I know getting on that spin bike that's a great low impact way and when I lost like a significant amount of weight in the winter to spring of 2020 I was doing I was doing my spin bike, man. Like I was doing my spin bike. It was fun. I would listen to my music. I'd really get into it. And it was really a lot of like zone zone two, zone three, not necessarily overly intense hit, but just like having a good time on the bike. So that paired with strength training and playing around with um, rep ranges and seeing how my body really shifts with different rep ranges like should I be more in the six to eight rep range or the like 15 rep range and see how my body responds to that that's fun for me I don't even care if it gets me results or not like that's that's fun for me and then meal wise I will be doing the to be mindset body block that's on body you know have your opinion about it or not I'm currently not open for that type of space and capacity for supporting people, but they have the to be mindset body block in January of 2024. And I really stand by Alana Molstein's creator of to be mindset, her program. Like she really has a great program of teaching how to lose weight. And she said something on her podcast and I can't pinpoint what episode it was you guys, but she was talking about like her who has, she's kind of had this, I've always struggled with my weight. Like weight was something she struggled with for a long amount of time. And then she was talking about a client of hers who never struggled with her weight, but really it was in the last like three years that she struggled with her weight. And Alana had kind of joked like, oh, well, must be nice. And she kind of had like joked about it, but then she really talked about how There comes a point in everybody's life where things change and weight management is a part of the human experience for most. Now, for sure, there are some people who weight management isn't something that they need to do. They can eat whatever they want and they have the body type that they want or whatever. But that really resonated with me because I've identified myself as like this person who struggles with my weight. But when I think about my 34 years of life, it's really only in the last, I would say, two, two and a half, three years that weight came back on and it has been stubborn since. And when I do a good reflection, (laughs) because actually my best friend Lauren and I were talking about this, where if I do an honest reflection It's not because I'm eating less and working out more. Like I am getting into the chips. I'm eating what I want. I am not being strict with myself. Like I have the dieting mentality, but I'm really not doing anything about it. So I'm going to start with a foundation that I know and I like and learn from a person that I know and I like. And that's Alana Molstein, creator of 2B Mindset. And in January, the Beach Body Beach Body is doing a body block. And I know it's confusing. Like, what's the difference between body and body blocks? And why don't I have access to this and that? Like, that's their own confusion that they've created. But <laughs> it's really not that confusing. But 
with the body block, I will be doing that. You can get access to to be mindset. Like if you're not, if you've never even heard of to be mindset, like that's the place to start is the to be mindset program is learning about the to be mindset principles in body. So that would be step one. Maybe even step one could be Alana Molstein's book. That's also really, really, really good. And this plan when I think about doing it, I really feel like it's going to support me in strength. It's going to support me in my goals. It's going to support me in energy. And that's really, really what I want to do. Something that I am going to personally try just because when I see something talked about on the internet, I'm like, why not try it myself? So Gary Brecka has gone viral. I'm sure you've heard of his name for his various talks that are going viral on social media, TikTok and Instagram, but Gary Brecka talks about this 30-30-30 method. So 30 grams of protein, 30 minutes upon waking, doing 30 minutes of steady state cardio, so zone two cardio. 30-30-30. 30 minutes of, or 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking and 30 minutes of, of zone two cardio. So how I see myself doing this is waking up, making a protein shake. I also will include a piece of toast or an apple, still playing around with something like that, just because I plan to do my lifting in the morning as well too on those three days. So eating something, And then going and doing my workout and instead of right away getting into my strength training, do my 30 minutes of steady state cardio and then like 30 minutes of lifting three days a week, not every day. So my goal is to do 30, 30, 30, four to five days a week and then lifting three days a week. Sometimes that will be layered and make an hour long workout. Sometimes that'll be just like pieces and points here and there. And so most of the time my zone two cardio will be the bike just because I'm doing this in the morning, want to be quiet while the family is sleeping, try not to wake up my boys. So I'm going to start with that and see how it fits. And why this is so different for me is because I've always told myself and always gravitated towards fasting. I've always told myself like I work out better when I don't have anything in my stomach because I can deal with some like I can get some indigestion sometimes or you know just even when you're when you've eaten something and then if you're moving I don't know does everybody struggle with indigestion I feel like it's just obviously for anybody if you eat something and then you lay down to do like a chest press or something like that your body biologically moves what's in your stomach up maybe that's just my body, but, and we'll talk about gut health here in a second, because I know that's a symptom of gut health issues, but with that, I've always done my lifting first and my cardio second, if I do cardio, so I'm switching that around, and I've always been fasted. I've really never been one that my routine has been to eat and then exercise, Even in the days of like 80 Day Obsession, when that came out in the body world, you know, Autumn had in that program, like you've got to wake up and eat something to fuel these workouts. They're tough workouts. They're long workouts. Time nutrition is really all about putting fuel into your body before you do your workouts. I was always just like, no, no, no. I work better fasted. I work out better fasted. Now, this may be so contradictory because I'm doing a class in the Patreon on fasting because there is new information about fasting in women. So this means I'm not going to be fasting. And uh, that's mind blowing to me because even in the capacity of like, even if I don't try to fast, I tend to fast because I I don't eat after dinner time and then I've just gotten into the routine of like waking up, getting things done and then when my body's like, oh, Joelle, you're hungry, then I eat something. Sometimes that's, I mean, the timing on that is just so off. So this is just so interesting and I've actually found it very peaceful. I've been implementing this for only a few days now, but the fact that it feels really good right off the top is a sign to me of like, oh, keep discovering into this, keep discovering into this. And I will wake up 
I drink my protein shake, I'm eating my toast, I'm just doing some sourdough with butter, just like a little bit of butter, go in, do my workout, and it's felt really good. It's felt really good, which is really kind of surprising to me. So I'm trying that out. My focus for nutrition will be protein and produce. One of the great things about going into 2024 is my husband talked about really cleaning up his nutrition too. And my husband is like an all or nothing kind of guy. And he's also the kind of guy where if he says something, he's set on it and he's going to do it. So I know that me cleaning things up for me, protein and produce style dinners. We love red meat. We love vegetables. We love all of that kind of stuff. And I actually am really looking forward to having him fully on board with this come 2024 because it will make it easier it just it just will and it doesn't have to be that way where you can't go after goals if your partner's not or whatever it is but it does make it easier and then supplementation so towards the end of 2023 i got the gut protocol supplements which is a digestive enzyme and a probiotic but i'm adding in my favorite protea supplements because i have been having some sleep issues, having some stress issues, some anxiety issues. So I am bringing back Protea Inkstify, which is a cortisol support supplement, a stress support supplement. If you struggle with falling asleep at night, if you struggle with really just feeling stressed out and on edge a lot of the time, then I would highly recommend trying out Inkstify. And you take that supplement mid-morning and mid-afternoon. It's important for the timing of this supplement, especially with any supplement that says it supports cortisol because you want your cortisol to fluctuate at certain times. So the timing of this supplement is important. And also GI assist. So I am going to be taking GI assist. That's a supplement you take in the evening. I am going to you know, shake up the GI assist. I will add some ice to it, maybe top it with some sparkling water, try to make it into like a fun little nightly mocktail. And um, it has magnesium and also fiber to support good gut health and other really good stuff in there. When I had such really great results, once again, in 2020 with what I was doing, I prioritized Angstify and GI assist every single day. I was on top of those supplements and I know they're high quality, they're created, they're really good supplements. So I still have a link for those if you guys are interested in those two supplements, like just the holidays and with the darkness and the gloominess that winter can bring sometimes, some extra cortisol support can be really beneficial, really beneficial. And I remember when I used to share about these supplements a lot, there were a lot of you ladies that were like, my husband has a stressful season with his job and he has noticed a huge difference. So it's not just for women, but the amount of people that tell me they tried it and they really feel it being supportive or they tried it they got off of it and then they're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? (laughs) Like I didn't realize how hard things were, how bad things were before um, or with not being on it anymore. Did that make sense? I'm starting to get a little tired and a little brain foggy, but this is my 2024 plan for the year. It's very simple. I'm trying some new things that are very different, but this is a very simple and streamlined plan. And I already have a lot of these healthy habits. There's just going to be some things that I continue to do to keep myself in check. And yeah, I'm looking forward to supporting my body this year because my body is no longer my business. And that feels really good, feels really freeing. So I am thrilled to go into 2024 being like my fitness journey is 100% for me. I don't have to show what I'm doing is working or, you know, and my main metric is feeling good. My main metric is feeling good and feeling active and feeling light and fit and strong. And if I feel that way, then I win. 
right? I'm winning. It doesn't matter what my abs look like or what my before and after picture looks like. For me, it's really the first year I'm giving myself that freedom of being like, this journey is not for anyone else but myself. And with my 2024 planning for the year, my dream planning, I talked about this a lot where I really recognized like a lot of when I approached weight loss, when I approached various things and not just weight loss, but other things in my life, I was approaching it from a place of hating my body. Like I need to lose this weight because I just hate how my body looks. I hate how I I hate what I see in the mirror. I hate that I'm buying the biggest size of pants that I've ever bought and they're still really tight, whatever, whatever. And sizing on clothes is ridiculous. So we should all just throw that out the window. But I really realized like a lot of my why was actually rooted in hate and not love. And my 2024 dream planning was just beautiful because it brought me to getting my heart in check to approaching all of this from a place of love. And I hope you guys can hear it in my voice of like, I love myself. I love my body. Yeah, I want to feel, I know I want to feel a certain way, but all of the decisions that I make in the approach of that is stemmed in love, not hate. I'm not hating my body anymore. And I'm going to have a really great episode upcoming about the internal work that leads to external change. And so I hope you guys follow the podcast, hop into Patreon if you feel called to, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Here's to 2024. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you loved what you heard or you want to share your favorite episode topics, please leave a rating and review. This helps the podcast growth and gives people an idea of what the podcast is all about. Something new and exciting that I wanted to share with you before we go is that we now have a Patreon page. This has replaced the Feminine Edge Collective community in a cohesive place that is easier for me to manage and cheaper for you. If you are interested in our monthly classes, exclusive day in the life vlogs, Bible studies, community Q&A, and more, go to patreon.com forward slash living in sync and join for just $5 a month. Check out the show notes for any links or details of things referenced in today's episode. And I look forward to chatting with you in the next one.